right. Well, thanks. I mean, can we get a better picture? Geez, I haven't shaved in like a week, and I look like I'm yelling at Sabrina over something. All right, she probably earned it, but uh, uh, first of all, I just want to say it's an honor to be here with you. It, it truly is, and uh, I think any time uh, you have a, a room full of ducks, that's, that's pretty special, and I, I, I would love to, to talk in front of a group like this at all times. Uh, the energy in the room is really good, which is also, uh, is also great. But you guys, uh, I just want you to know that I am honored. Each and every day, I, uh, I feel privileged to, to be able to be the coach of the you know, women's basketball team, University of Oregon. I am really one blessed man. Uh, there's just no question about it. I love my team. Um, you know, each and every day, I, I, I can't wait to get up and go to work because it's so much fun. And I just want you to know, as alums and Duck fans here, that the team that I coach represents you very well, very well. If you had a chance to, you know, I know a lot of you have seen them play in person, okay, and you know what great, you know, basketball players they are, but I just want you to know if you had a chance to just spend a few minutes with them and talk to them, I think you would be equally, if not more, impressed with who they are as people. And so I tell people all the time that, you know, I get to work with the best and the brightest that this generation has to offer, and I truly feel that way. And, uh, you know, in, in our, uh, I guess it's been four and a half years since, uh, uh, you know, since I, I took the job here at University of Oregon, we've been able to build something very special very quickly. So, you know, I think uh, everybody knows how we did last year. We got to the final four. And I think there's an, uh, yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, thank the coach. I didn't score a single basket. And I didn't, haven't gotten a single rebound. I, I do get some technical fouls from time to time, but <laughs> only because they're well-deserved, and then sometimes I can't hold my tongue. But uh, you guys, this, uh, this, this has, we have a chance this year to, to have one of those memorable seasons. And I know the expectations are, are great externally. You know, I know what, what people are expecting. I just want you to know it's really hard. It's really hard. And so I hear people all the time say, you know, coach, I got my tickets to New Orleans, which is where the Final Four is this year. And I say, well, well, that's great. You bought yours. We have to earn ours. And so I just want you to know that that is, you know, something that, that we do think about. We know we're good enough to get there. But contrary to what you might think, because I'm sure you've heard a lot of coaches who talk about uh, goal setting and things like that, you know, we do not have a goal of winning a national championship. We do not have a goal of winning our third straight Pac-12 championship. You know what our goal is? Okay? To have a great practice, right? To work hard and get better each and every day. We know what we're capable of doing. But I think sometimes we put these goals out there and we think that, you know, that's something that's overlying over the entire program. And it's just a lot of pressure. And I think needless pressure. What I love about coaching and what I know my players love about playing in our program is that it's a journey, it's a process. Each and every day is different. We're growing together, we're having fun, we love being each other, uh, with each other. And as we go on, you'll hear me use the word love a lot, okay? But you guys, we, we do have a, a phenomenal team. I want you to come down and see as many games as possible, okay? So that uh, you know, we can realize really our potential and get back to that final four and this time maybe win a national championship. But you guys, I have, uh, it, you know, I, uh, again, I travel with rock stars and those that have been around my team, you, you know what I'm talking about. So last year, last spring, uh, we were in LA, Sabrina and, and I, uh, at the uh, John Wooden Award. So she won the John Wooden National Player of the Year. That's like the Heisman for, for college basketball. And uh, yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool, very cool and very well deserved. But, uh, you know, after the, the, the party, there was a little after party, or after, uh, a, after ceremony party, right? And all the big timers were there. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Dr. J, uh, Carl Malone, Jerry West for you old timers out there. Uh, you know, kind of a who's who. And, you know, and I think I'm okay and I'm kind of cool, so I go up and introduce myself and they like brush me off so fast. Right? But then I say, I'm Sabrina's coach, and they go, Coach, great to meet you. Gosh, I love your team. You're Sabri you work with Sabrina. So now that's what I've become, Sabrina's coach. Okay, <laughs> Sabrina's coach. But uh, that's an honor. 
believe me, it's an honor. And I'm going to talk a little bit about her tonight. But you guys, I'm not going to give kind of a laundry list of what we, we know about sports and what it teaches us. To me, the most important part about sports, about athletics, is belonging. Okay? Belonging. Just being part of something that's bigger than oneself. Okay? And I think that's what, you know, we need a lot more of in, in this world. But, you know, we're, we're part of a group. We're part of a family. We're working together each day to accomplish something. Okay? To find our own purpose within a team context. Okay? And that's such a powerful thing. And I think sometimes, I, I truly don't think that we can truly be a whole person until we become part of something that's just bigger than us. Okay? Each one of our players, you guys, has value. They have value. And, and we do not determine what that value is by their playing time. Okay? Because each individual person is important. Jazz art, right? Was it arts? Jazz arts. Okay? That beautiful ensemble. Okay? I liken our team to a symphony to a band all the time. We're making beautiful music. And if you watch us play, you know that's the case. We're the best offensive team in the country, hands down, by every metric that the NCAA keeps. Just to give you an example, our true shooting percentage last year, our true shooting percentage, okay? It's, a, it's an analytic, we're not gonna deal with it right now. It was 57.6%, number one in the nation. The Golden State Warriors were number one in the NBA. 57.4%. So we're a better shooting team than the Warriors, right? So it is, it's like making beautiful music. And every player has a role in it. It's just like the band that we saw up here before. You take one of those instruments away and it's not the same. It doesn't sound the same. You need everything to make the team whole, to make the band sound just right. When Lindsey Buckingham left my favorite band, Fleetwood Mac, for a decade, they still made music. It just wasn't very damn good. Okay? <laughs> they needed him and his guitar abilities, right? So we, we like in that way, and I'll, I'll give you a good example. I have a young person, uh, a young woman who just graduated this past spring named Audie Gilden. Audie Gilden came to us four years ago. She was our highest rated recruit that the University of Oregon had ever signed. So Adi got there as a freshman, shy, you know, uh, it, it, you know, school, you know, she struggled in school. It, it didn't come easy to her. Uh, played a little bit, played behind an All-American named Julian Aileen that first year as a freshman. But, you know, we all thought, hey, she's going to, you know, like they all do, they, they get better and they improve and they find a, a, a more significant role on the, on the floor. Well, that next year we signed Ruthie Hebert. Lydia Giomi, Sabrina Ionescu, and on and on and on. We had, you know, really the number one class in the country. And so Adi didn't get to start. And Adi became a role player for the next four years, okay? Uh, she didn't leave. She didn't go because, well, I'm not playing much, so I'm going to go somewhere else. If you asked anybody on our team in the last three years when we went to Elite Eight, Elite Eight, Final Four, who the heart and soul of our team was, they'd all say Adi Gilden, Okay? She made our team go. If we don't have her, I, I'm telling you, who knows what happens after that. But she accepted that role, okay? And what she did is she grew as a young person, you know, a, a young, strong woman, okay? She graduated from college in, her, in four years, you know, at U of O. First in her family to, to ever graduate. She inspired her mother. Now her mother is, has gone back to school to get her degree, Okay? She is now realizing her dream. We FaceTimed yesterday. She's in Portugal playing pro basketball okay? and doing quite well. So this is a person that came in you know, here, and she blossomed as a young person at the University of Oregon through basketball. And when you say, that's what I do, that's why I do what I do as a coach. It's not about the wins. I've been, this is my 33rd year of coaching coming up. Okay? I'm far beyond, hey, you know, we, we won all this many games. To me, it's about those kind of moments, okay, Adi Gilden. So four and a half years ago when I did get the job, the one thing we needed to do, you guys, was change the culture, okay? I'm not saying it was broken because there, there were very fine young women in the program, but it wasn't a championship level, okay, in attitude, in talent, in kind of everything that we did daily, okay, the way we, we behaved. So we had to change that. First thing I did in our locker room, I had a mural built or 
drawn or done, or I don't know how they do it, okay, but of Mount Hood. And I don't know if there's a river that runs to Mount Hood, but I put a river in my mural, okay, <laughs> going up to it. There was another little peak to the side, and on the bottom, I have one of my favorite sayings, okay, a vision so powerful, it has to become a reality. So on that big wall-sized mural at the very top peak, it said National Champions. On one of the, the lower peaks, it put Pac-12 Champions. Okay? I just left it there. We didn't talk about it, but I just put it there. They saw it every single day when they went into their locker room. The other piece of art I had done was, by the way, a beautiful piece by a group here out of Portland. They used part of OHSU's old basketball court. So it's a beautiful wooden court, okay, with the five core values that we believe in, okay? Five core values. Number one, unity, okay, unity. Two, passion, integrity, thankfulness, servanthood. Those are our five core values. If you talk to any one of my players, they not only will tell you what those are, but they'll tell you what, how they affect them and what they believe in and, and what that means to them, okay? So those aren't really the values you would think that you would hear from a coach, right? Normally in a sports team, it's toughness, it's discipline, it's hard work. Those are our values. No. Servanthood, thankfulness, integrity, unity, passion. So we'll quickly talk about each one. Integrity, you guys. What we've done is we've tried not to cut corners. We make mistakes like everybody, okay? We try to own up to them, but right from the start, we have recruited championship character people. They happen to be really good basketball players, but they're championship people, okay? And to me, that's the most important. Knuckleheads never win for you in the end, ever. Knuckleheads, just you can quote me on that. Knuckleheads never win the big game, okay? So, so we recruit integrity. We try to do the right thing all the time. I think our players really respect and they trust each other. I think that's part of integrity, okay? Secondly, all right, let's go with passion. That's part of my MVP of leadership, passion, right? You got mission, vision, passion. You know, loving what you do. And if you've seen us play, that's the one compliment I get more than any. You guys really look like you love each other and you play well together. You, you, you can tell you have fun. My team is very passionate. And I say the same thing every year about five or six times. If you don't love what you're doing, do something else. You're going to kick yourself 20 years down the road. This life is short. 20 years from now, when you say, well, I just stayed there because I got a scholarship. No, you should stay there because you love your teammates and you're passionate about playing the game of basketball for the University of Oregon. So passion is, is something that's just, again, vital for us. And I think we recruit passionate people. All right? The next one is unity. We have a saying, you don't have to like each other, but you got to love each other, all right? I have brothers and sisters, and every once in a while I get mad at them, right? And I don't like them, but I still love them because they're family, and that's how we try to treat each other, okay? Unity. We're always together. I think that's just so critical in, this, in, in, in today's society. Our kids nowadays, they got a lot of problems and a lot of pressures, okay? The one thing about being on a team, you can't fake it. If you have some men mental health issues, you can't fake it. Your teammates are going to know, and they're going to help you. That's what they're there for, okay? Unity, being part of each other, building that relationship that lasts a lifetime. You know how many weddings I've been to? How many kids that have been born to former players of mine? We've laid one to rest. But the last week of her life, she died from cancer last summer. The last week of her life, her teammates gathered around here for that last week. And they had so much fun just talking and reliving great times because that, in the end, is what it's all about. We forget how many games we win, but what you remember are those great times and that family that you built together. So unity, okay? Uh, thankfulness. Thankfulness. Tell you a true story. At the Final Four last year, Nike surprised our players, okay, as they did a couple of, I think there were three Nike teams at the Final Four, with, you guys, just a mountain of Nike, new Nike gear, specifically for the Final Four, including two brand new pair of shoes. And to see our players' reaction, it was like Christmas Day. So I'm sitting there back like dads do at Christmas, right? We let the, you know, the kids, they all enjoy it, and we sit back there and, and, and watch, right? 
So I was sitting back there watching, and there was a gentleman next to me from Nike, one of the Nike executives, and I, I looked over, and he had tears in his eyes. He's crying. I asked him, I said, well, why are you crying? And he goes, Kelly, this is why we do what we do, okay? He says, and not every team has this same reaction. And I was really proud of that, that we've taught our kids to be appreciative. It's so easy to, be, easy to feel entitled at the University of Oregon because we get so much stuff. But they truly appreciated that moment and, and, and being there. And that made me so happy, right? And then the last one, you guys, and I think perhaps the most important is servanthood. And this is where I get the chance to talk about Sabrina a little bit. Um, you see her on the exterior. You see her toughness and her skill level and her, her championship competitive spirit, something that you just can't teach. That's in you. I, I, you can't teach that. That's how she's driven, and that's who she is. But you guys, she has the, most, the softest side you'll ever see. She's very spiritual, okay? Um, she, uh, she's a great teammate, very selfless in everything that she does. If you listen to her press conferences after a game, she might have 35 points, 15 rebounds, 12 assists, another triple-double. First thing that will come out of her mouth is, my teammates played so well tonight. Well, Sabrina, how, tell us how you got those 35 points. Well, my teammates, they set me up. They knew I was hot. They set me up. Well, you had 15 assists. My teammates were getting open. Okay? They were making the baskets. That is who she is to the core, you guys. And here's one thing that you're the first people that will hear this. At the Elite Eight game last year in Portland, 12,000 people, right, going crazy. We win the game. We're going to the Final Four. We win the game. Everybody's celebrating out on the court, you know, with, with family and friends and uh, alums and the cheerleaders and the band and everybody else. We have the net cutting ceremony, okay? Sabrina goes up there and she cuts a loop for herself. That's the tradition, right? And then you take a piece, and you've got a piece of that net forever. Then she cut about eight other little tiny pieces. You probably never even recognize that. So in the midst of the biggest moment, perhaps, of her basketball life, she's thinking of others. You know what she did with those little seven or eight little loops? She went and handed them to all the support staff that help us, that didn't get a chance to go up there, our sports information director, our announcer, our trainer, our strength coach. She had the wherewithal to, to, to do that for everybody else, okay? Not wanting any kind of limelight, but that's who she is to the core. She is a great teammate. She is a servant leader. And if you want a great team, you get your best player to buy in and to serve their teammates like that, to sacrifice for them, you got something, and you got something special. And when she said that she's coming back, I think that spoke to the fact she really loves her team. She could have gone pro. She would have been the number one pick. She would have started her pro career. But she loves the University of Oregon, you guys. She loves her teammates. She loves her coach day to day, okay, <laughs> day to day. Uh, but... You know, that, that's who she is, and quite frankly, the rest of the team takes that lead from her. That's who they are. You will never find a more unified basketball team. There are more athletic teams out there. There are bigger teams. There are quicker teams. There's not a closer team. There's not a closer team, and I can say that with 100% of surety, okay? So that being said, uh, I would love to, do I just open it to the questions myself? Do I need your help? Okay. All right. Well, let's talk some questions. Hey, we'll hold the phone. I got a buck nine left. Hey, he's a buck guys, nine under dessert time. dessert, too. So, so I'll hurry and clock. finish this so we can get some dessert. Let's, yes. go, to, let's go to Alexis. Oh, you're calling on him. I'll, I'll stay back. So as, as many years of you be, uh, growing as a coach, were there any moments where you were scared of what other people thought of you? Sure, tonight. <laughs> you guys, I do this kind of stuff a lot. I have never, ever been this nervous, ever. I was less nervous going into the Final Four game against Baylor, and they, I looked up to every one of them, okay? Jeez, and then you see that, and that'll scare you to death. Uh, but no, 
No, you know why? And, and here's, Sabrina says it all the time. Ruthie says it all the time. Coach, we got you. We got you tonight. And I know that they're going to go out and kick the other team's butt. Okay? We'll go to Dwayne right here, Coach. Yeah. Uh, I'm surprised that you're staying so far away from those drums because I saw you last Saturday at the, at the tailgater. You, he was banging and on And I don't the, even drink. He was banging on the drum pretty <laughs> well. I was banging well. on him. Yeah. Hey, so great, great season last year. You lost a couple players, but you got a ton of players coming back. How do you integrate a graduate transfer into your program considering that everybody else that's been there already yeah. lives the five values? Yeah. Well, we, we check our egos at the door. I think we're all pulling the rope in the same direction. We want to be as good as we can be. Uh, players work out and practice against each other every day. They, knew, they know who the better players are. And so that's what we do. We play the, the team that, you know, is going to work the best together. And, they're, they're, again, they're selfless. They're selfless. You know, and I'll show you an example of our unity. If you ever watch us play, okay, and now you will, okay, we have uh, a little saying called PTT, point, touch, talk. So if you ever watch us play and somebody makes a pass and somebody goes in and makes the layup, the player that makes the shot will always point to the player that made that pass. Always. So don't give me the credit. It was the pass. And then the second part of that, so point, touch, you know, we'll slap them on the butt, right, or something like that. I can't do that, but they can do that, okay? <laughs> and then you talk. You know, hey, great pass. Let's get them. You know, whatever the case may be. Point, touch, talk. That is inherent to our basketball program. We have a team Lent before every season where our players sacrifice something for that year. Or they add something that will enhance their life as, as kind of a way of dedicating the season to the basketball team. You know, that might be call my grandparents once a week. Attend church every week. Cut out potato chips, which is what I'm going to do this year. Okay? We'll see if that helps. Uh, so on and on and on. So those are the things that, 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 that we sacrifice. So I can't remember what the question was, but what the heck. I just kept going. We got I'm, like, I'm like Springsteen, man. I'll just stay up here until, you, okay, until you're all done. Oh, we'll keep right, on. Go. Coach, we got Lou Wood over here. Coach, recruiting is a very competitive activity. So what are the keys to the success that you've had in recruiting the players into the university? A great question, and recruit, recruiting is the lifeblood. I'd like to sit here and say I'm some kind of a genius. I'm not. I have better players than the, the teams I play with or play against. Uh, what it comes down to, and it also is what's the most important part about the team, recruiting comes down to building relationships. That's it. That's it. They're not coming to Oregon because of the beautiful weather, you know. Um, they're, uh, you know, they're, becoming, they're coming because they develop relationships, really strong bonds with the coaches and with the players that, that we have. That, that's the key. That's the key. I just blew myself out of the water right there and, and exposed ourselves. That's what it all comes down to. Now, that being said, we work really hard, and I think we attract the right kind of players, unselfish players. When I talk to a player and she says, well, how many minutes am I going to play, you think, as a freshman? Mm, you're not coming here. I don't worry about it. You shouldn't worry about that. Okay? Hey, how many touches? That's what they say now. How many touches am I going to get? <laughs> Well, I don't know how many you're going to get for that other school, <laughs> but you're not going to get, you know, those kind of things, those are red flags for me. You know, to me, it's all about the team. Team, team, team. Good question. So build good relationships. And even at your companies, you know, get deep with your, with your employees so that you really can care for one another. And, and not in a fake kind of way, but in a real kind of passionate way. Okay, you care for that individual. Right here, second yes, row. So what about... Um any lessons from your childhood? Like, how did you sort of come to believe in these values? Any lessons you learned early? You know, it's funny. I, I kind of came upon coaching women's basketball by, uh, by accident. My first job out of college, I went to the University of New Mexico. My former high school, or my high school coach was the men's basketball coach at Big Bend Community College up in Moses Lake, Washington. And so he talked me into coming up and maybe helping him teach and then coach. And you know what my salary was that first year? 1250 bucks. <laughs> yeah, $1,250 was my salary. I plowed potato fields at 5 o'clock every morning, uh, did some odd jobs here and there, just, you know, trying to make ends meet because I really wanted to be a coach. Well, the women's job opened up right before school started. And 
they didn't really have time to, to open it up for a coach. And so they just said, well, you're here. You want to do it? And I'd never seen a women's basketball game in my life. And you know why I took the job? It paid $2,500. <laughs> and they let me stay on as the assistant men's coach. So I'm in, living in the lap of luxury. Plus, they gave me a room in the dorms. So that's how I got it started. And then the reason I stuck with it, I never had a more fun season coaching as I did that first year. I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything about anything. But I had a great time. And, and four, of those, four of my players from that team went on to win state championships as high school coaches. We had something really special. We weren't very good. Now, they had a, we, we, we ended the 55 straight lo game losing streak in the league. We won four games that first year. But uh, I stuck with it because I really liked, I think women are, are more uh, open to coaching. Okay, they don't think they know it all. Uh, they're a lot more fun to be around on a daily basis. They're better students. Uh, they're equally strong. People will say, well, they're really emotional. Baloney, you know what? They're no Sabrina's going to knock your block off and try and beat you in anything. Game of Uno, poker, uh, connect four, whatever it is. And she's going to find any single way to do it. Emotional? Yeah, I don't buy that stuff. All right? They're still competitors, yeah, just, like, just like guys. And so, but the one thing I've noticed with women, it's a lot more about the process. It's about being, you know, the daily interactions with their teammates is much more powerful than it is with men. That fits me. And, and so I just kind of connected with that, and 33 late years later, I'm at the University of Oregon, baby. Yeah. yeah. And here until 2023, 24, right? What's that? With a contract, thank goodness. Yeah. Till 23. We got Sabrina here. Oh. Sabrina? Yeah. And yeah. Different. You're my favorite person. Yeah. So, Coach, I'm known as the other Sabrina at the University of Oregon. 5'3", uh, and I do not have a good jump shot, so you know, full disclosure. I don't have a question. But I, can I just say something? Sure. It's not, you know, height doesn't matter. 5'3", you can, it's the size of the heart that matters. I now. Love, I love this guy. Okay. So, so I really but, don't have a question. I more so have a comment. I am actually really impressed that you've put forward sort of five values or pillars that not only serve these student athletes as athletes, but as students and as people going on in the future. And I think sometimes people forget that they are students first, athletes second, and you, sir, have put forth pillars that will serve them in all aspects yeah, of their thank lives. You. So congratulations. Thank you. thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Last question. I, I, hey, I will say this, though, about, you're cutting me off already? No, 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 finish, finish, brother. Big guy. Yeah. So we talked about the height. You guys, before I got to Oregon, I was 14 years a head coach at Gonzaga, and we had just a, a, just a lovely um, sister, you know, a nun that sat on our bench for every game. And she really kept me in check, you know, my language and everything like that. But she used to always say, she used to always say, Kelly, you know, players work better when prayers are bigger. <laughs> and I would say, yeah, you're right, sister, but prayers work better when players are bigger. So 5-3 is <laughs> fine, all right? And I can say, and I'm putting all this together in one, I do believe in higher education because right now, my team is 6'7", 6'6", 6'6", 6'5", 6'4", 6'4", and on down. So, yes, we believe in higher education down there at the <laughs> University of Oregon. So, All right, last question. Greg Bell, Greg for, Bell. former player, men's exactly. team, and sitting on the UO and Foundation board. of one Mark Few. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, Coach, uh, you're going hard, and I know your family and that, but how do you keep balance? You know, it just if you'd speak it, from it, from the perspective of, I mean, all of us are busy with lives and work and, you know, yeah. how, how do we keep, keep uh, that yeah. balance? How do you Greg, do thank you so much for asking that. And by the way, What's Going Well, phenomenal book, okay? Water the Bamboo, phenomenal book by our own duck, all right? Um, hey, my father-in-law's here, so I'm partly saying it because he's here, but the other part is because it's the truth. You guys, I think um, I have been able to to do what I do and love what I do because I, I do have work-life balance. Um, I am married 25 years to Mary, a St. Mary's Academy gal right here in Portland. And uh, we have three sons, all of whom are in basketball. One's working for the Dallas Mavericks in player development. One's coaching a, 
uh, women's basketball team at Lane Community College, and my youngest son is playing basketball at Gonzaga University. So they're all in basketball, which is, which is a lot of fun. But Greg, honestly, I can be a better coach when I'm a better father and husband. I can be a better father and husband when I'm a better coach. They, they, they go together. If I'm too much of one and not enough of the other, then I'm not going to be happy. I'm not gonna, my life isn't going to be as fulfilled. So I, I think, um, and, and the honest truth is, my wife's been the best assistant coach that I've ever had. I've run more stuff by her than, than anybody, and she's usually right. She's usually right. And one of the best things she taught me, and, and you know, sometimes you hear about coaches and players, they're always fighting each other, right, and there's always drama on a team. You know, Mary and I, over the years, have disagreed on how to discipline the boys. Boys need discipline when they're young, right? And so we might argue over that. But she always says, you know, Kelly, we're on the same team. And so we try to have that same kind of attitude with our team. You know, it's the coaches and the players. We're all together. We need synergy. And, uh, and so I rely on them, you know, to, to, to help me coach the best. They inspire me to be a better coach because I better come prepared each and every day and not have a bad day because I know they won't. So, yeah, good question. Thank you. Is that good? Time for dessert? One big thunderous applause for Coach Kelly Graves. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.